Hey everyone, it's Brandy Janae. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel today. In today's video, I am going to be talking about my experience with having my gastric sleeve surgery and my issues with weight gain. So if you are interested in seeing this video, please be sure to stay tuned. Okay, thank you so much. Again, my name is Brandy Janae. If this is your first time here seeing my face, then welcome. <laughs> and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here with me today. I truly appreciate you. This is a video that is very, very, very long overdue because to be perfectly honest with you guys, I've been a little embarrassed. I've been a little, a little embarrassed about it because if you've seen my earliest, earlier post-op videos, like I was so gung-ho. I was following the plan. I was doing everything the doctor said. Like I was like the weight loss surgery poster child. Like your girl was winning. I was exercising a couple times a day, eating, you know, according to schedule and plan and all of those things. And then insert slow blink. <laughs> I stopped. I stopped. All of the habits, all of the things that I was doing prior to having this surgery came back. Um, and I fell down a hole of just constant pound after pound after pound. I noticed started coming back. So I just kind of to bring you forward if you have not known that I even had weight loss surgery in the beginning. I had my uh, gastric sleeve surgery in 2020. So it was literally like right COVID, like right in the beginning of it all. Um, I think the world shut down in May. I was able to sneak in and have surgery done in June, which everything was still very, very, very heavy at the time. And so I was doing great. Like I lost so much weight, which I, again, I do have videos from like, you know, three years ago in my um, playlist, which I will be sure to try to link those in the video. Um, but I was doing so, so, so well. Like I was so excited to finally be able to have the life that I'm used to living back that I like just, I went in. <laughs> Like I completely went in. They said, don't eat any snacks. I didn't eat any snacks. They said, eat fruits and vegetables. I ate fruits and vegetables, drank two shakes a day. I drank two shakes a day. Like I did everything. And I was so excited to be able to get up and walk and move. And, you know, all of those things that people take for granted that I was not able to do prior to having this surgery just because of injury. So I was so excited. And then in December, I got COVID. So I think that was December of, yes, I made it to December of 2021. I got sick, very, very, very sick. So after this point, I had already started to lose, like I said, a significant amount of weight. Um, I think the lowest I had gotten down to was like 185, which I was very comfortable with that. I am a very top heavy person. <laughs> My girls know I'm a very top heavy person. So being too much smaller to me, for me, looks strange. And I know everybody has their number and everybody has their size and, you know, all of that jazz. For me, I'm a 185 to 195 kind of person. That is what I feel the most comfortable as. That is where I like to be. When COVID hit, I ended up getting down to about 175 just because I was so sick, so, so sick. And I was disgusted. I was disgusted by the skin. I was disgusted by, you know, the sunkenness I felt like in my face, just the way my clothes fit. Like I was disgusted. <laughs> and I'm like, uh-uh, 175 does not work for me. I am a woman. 
And I appreciate being a curvy woman. I appreciate being a thicker woman. I appreciate being a, you know, healthier looking woman. My desire has never been to be slim. If that's your desire, do you, boo? That just doesn't, it don't, it don't sit right with me. I like to look like a woman woman. <laughs> And I do not want to be confused with like a 12 year old child. Like, don't, never, never in my life would I want to be confused for a child. So I enjoy being a full, what they say, full figured woman. Okay. Just a smaller one, a smaller full figure. <laughs> but again, if you big and bad, uh, do you boo, no shade either way. You have to do what's comfortable for you and what makes you feel good in your skin. In my skin, which I will address in a minute, I prefer the 185 to 195 threshold. Now, like I said, 175 was the lowest I've gotten. I was like, uh-uh, not gonna be able to do it. And so I almost intentionally <laughs> started kind of breaking the rules to gain some weight back because I'm like, nope, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this. So in the beginning, I almost kind of intentionally started doing things to gain the weight back. It, you know, and then it just spiraled. It spiraled out of control. So I will say that I have stuck with the, you know, no drinking. I call it pop. Some people call it soda, whatever. I don't drink that. Um, but I did start, you know, consuming alcohol again, which not a lot, but still, um, I am obsessed with Starbucks. And so I was going, I had put myself on like a two times a week schedule, just mostly for financial reasons. But literally there were some weeks where I would go four or five times a day. Like it was bad. It was, I mean, not a day. Oh my goodness. Four or five times a week. Like it was bad. And so I did that. I started eating out all the time instead of cooking and which everybody that knows me knows I really don't cook. But even just preparing anything at home to me, <laughs> even if it's in my air fryer, is better than going out and getting something from like a fast food, fast food restaurant. So I started eating out all the time. Like I said, I was going to Starbucks all the time, not exercising, not working, like nothing, nothing. I was not doing anything. I would randomly go for a walk here or there. I would randomly go to a gym. Like everything was just random. There was no intentionality to anything that I was doing. Um, and then as far as like my regular diet, I still eat very little. So it wasn't necessarily the food per se, because even let's say I would go and get, um, let's just say I went to Chick-fil-A. I would go to Chick-fil-A and I would buy like, you know, the eight count nugget meal or whatever. I can't eat that. <laughs> like I could probably get through eight nuggets and then maybe like four fries. Like, so I still can't really eat physically all of the things. So the food wasn't for me and it still isn't really for me, my largest struggle because I have, I have had the ability to keep my stomach you know, shrunk. It may not be as small as it was, you know, three years ago, but it's definitely still on like, it has not stretched back to its full capacity, which is what I'm trying to say. Um, my number one, number one, insert another slow blink, is snacks. Yep. Snacks. I am a Snackosaurus Rex. I will eat snacks all day long. I don't eat food. I don't even care about food. I love snacks. <laughs> I am a grazer, which is rule number one. Do not graze. Rule number one, do not graze. I did it. I started doing it. I would just get, you know what? I think I want a snack. At that time, I should have been drinking some water. That's what I should have been doing. But no, 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 no. I would go get a snack and I'm just, do, do, do. you know, that little baby on TikTok where she's like, cha, 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 cha. That was me. I'm going to go get my chips. I'm going to go get my candy. I'm going to get my whatever bad thing that I'm not supposed to have. That is what I wanted all the time. That was it. That's all I wanted all the time. Snacks, snacks, snacks. I didn't care about food. I don't care because eating a bag of chips <laughs> is going to make me feel just as full as eating a piece of chicken. So for me, I'm like, I'd rather have snacks. I like those more 
Anyway, they taste better to me. They make me feel good. I'd rather have the snacks. So, surgery, COVID. Then, snack time. Then after that, I ended up having to have a knee surgery, which of course put me down for like six weeks. So again, more snacks. Then I've had COVID two more times, which has laid me down. And again, more snacks. You see where I'm going here? You see, you see, it's the snack. It's the snacks for me. <laughs> and I don't know why other people gain their weight back, but for me, it has been snacks. That's it. That's it. It has been snacks. And in December of 2023, I finally decided enough was enough. I stood on the scale. I don't even remember. And I'm going to say that my range is between 185 and 195, but really I prefer the 185. Like <laughs> my goal is to be back at the 185. Um, 195 gives me a little wiggle room. That's that's really what that is. It's a little, little wiggle wiggle, but like 195 means get your life together because you're doing too much. But I would prefer to stay closer to the 185. So anyway, I digress. I stepped on the scale. I don't even remember when it was because I cried a little bit. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I stepped on the scale and it said 205. And I was shook because I promised myself when I had this surgery that for me, the whole point of having this surgery for me was to not be one of them people that have some hot girl summer. Like it had nothing to do with me not enjoying the way that I looked before. Because at 255, to me, I was fine. <laughs> when they suggested that I had weight loss surgery, I was like, your mama, I ain't fat. But I couldn't move and I couldn't walk. And after being ambulanced multiple times from work because I could not stand back up because my body... My back was so messed up that it would literally lock itself and I couldn't even get out of a chair. I couldn't go to the store. I couldn't walk around. I couldn't go to any like, even when I went to like concerts or events or anything like that, like I'd have to use the handicap access because I literally could not stand in line without being at like a number 10 excruciating pain level. And I wanted my life back. That was it. That was it. I wanted my quality of life pre-back injury back. I wanted to be able to go to the gym. I wanted to be able to go for walks. I wanted to be able to go to the store without crying. Like all of those things I wanted to be able to do again. I was tired of the injections, tired of therapy, tired of nerve specialists, tired of everybody just poking and prodding and just, ugh. I was sick of it, you guys. Like sick of it. I just wanted to be a regular... 30 something year old person again that was able to live the life that they wanted to live. And so I decided with a lot of medical recommendation that this would be the avenue best for me because they were like, we can do back surgery, but we can't guarantee that back surgery is going to fix anything. But we can guarantee that if you lose weight, it is going to alleviate the pressure on your joints all the way. And so after, you know, again, lots of thought and prayer and just woo-sawing about that whole process, I went for it. And I'm so grateful that I did. But as I was walking around in that hospital during recovery, I said, I will never come back here. I will never come back here. I met a lady there and she had, uh, what was it called? A revision. And I was mad because I'm like, anybody tell me about a revision? Maybe I wanted that instead. How come that wasn't an option? <laughs> I didn't know what she meant. <laughs> so I'm like, well, what's a revision? And she's like, I lost 90 pounds and I gained 70. And I was like, oh, no, I don't want that. Uh, I don't want a revision. I'm never coming back here. Like never. So if I sit around and do whatever I do to gain weight back to the point where I'm 250 pounds, then I'm going to live with those consequences for the rest of my life. Like that is what I told myself 
in the hospital. I will not do this again. The amount of work, the amount of just Ugh, mental turmoil <laughs> that this process has brought me, the amount of just, just, it's just a lot of everything that they don't tell you. So if you want to know more about what they don't tell you before, let, let leave me a comment below and I'll do another deep dive into the world of <laughs> BSG because it's different for everybody. I will say it is different for everybody. But for me, especially the mental, the mental effects of this surgery have been greater than the physical effects of this surgery for me. So yeah, but that's a whole other video. But if you want, if you want to know, you let me know and I'll break it down for you. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a lot. And it was a, it's a process that I don't ever, 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 ever. <laughs> want to endure again. Do I recommend it? Not for everybody. I do not recommend this for everybody. If it is a matter of what I deem as being almost like a life or death situation, then absolutely. I say go for it. If it's a matter of this is the only way that you can get your quality of life back, then I say yes, absolutely. But if this is a, I want to look good in a swimsuit, mm, no, mm -mm, this ain't that. This, this ain't that, this ain't that. Because this has to be a full commitment, literally, for the rest of your life. And looking good in a swimsuit to go to the Bahamas for spring break. Because mm -mm. once you reach that goal, are you going to continue? Are you going to continue the process? And then again, everything that comes along with looking good in that swimsuit to go to the Bahamas may or may not be worth it for you. Like it... <laughs> It may or may not be worth it. And now you've done all of this and you got all the other stuff that comes along with it. It may or may not be worth it. So I have taken steps to fix my life. I have committed to not going out for fast food. So I'm not not going to be well I'm not going to say that I'm never going to go but it's definitely going to be much less frequent since uh, uh we're going to just start in December so today is December what 12th I believe I think today is the 12th 13th I don't know that I'm filming this I think it's the 12th um but since they like since January <laughs> I'm saying December oh my goodness January I have not had any fast food at all. So every meal that I have eaten has come from my home. I did go to a restaurant once to celebrate a friend's birthday. Um, but even then I was very mindful of what I purchased. Um, so yeah, I have not had any fast food. I have reduced my Starbucks consumption to once a week. I am committed to that. I will only go on Thursdays unless they're doing double or triple stars day on like a Tuesday or a Thursday, then I will go one of those days because the points. Um, but I'm one day. That's it. I'm grounded one day a week. But that is a, a treat for myself that I don't want to give up. <laughs> Period. I don't want to give it up. I make coffee at home, you know, every day. I have to drink coffee without it. I do get migraines. Um, and part of this surgery, I can't take Excedrin or most other, you know, medications and things like that. So coffee will reduce the amount of my, I can't drink Pepsis or Mountain Dews or any of that kind of stuff. So coffee reduces migraines for me. So I will continue to always be a coffee drinker unless some magical thing comes up and I don't have to do that anymore. Um, so no fast food, one day a week for coffee. I did completely give up alcohol. Um, again, not that I over consumed, but for me, if I am going to potentially have any additional calories or any extra things like that, I would still rather eat it. I would still rather eat it <laughs> than drink it. Um, and because I know that I'm a snacker, that brings me to the next thing that I'm doing. Because I know that I am a snacker and I will probably always be a snacker, I have changed my snacks. I have changed from going out and getting chips and, you know, candy bars and 
bags of this and bags of that. I've changed all of that. So now I'm eating Nutri-Grain bars or fiber bars or, um, you know, sugar-free things or uh, popcorn instead of chips. Like all of the things that I was doing before I just went crazy. <laughs> I'm going back to that. So again, to say that I will never eat another snack is unrealistic and not attainable for me. For you, that might work. For me, it won't. I already know it won't. I'm not going to lie to myself and I'm not going to sit on this internet, on these YouTubes and lie to y'all because I already know it's not going to happen. I'm going to eat a snack because I like them, but I'm going to eat them less. Mm -hmm. I'm going to eat them less. And typically now what I've been trying to do is when I have the need to snack on something, I drink some water. <laughs> I drink some water first. If it is a situation where I'm like, you don't need a snack, you need to eat lunch, then I go eat lunch. Or you don't need a snack, it's dinner time. How about you eat dinner? Then I go do that. But if I'm just, you know, it's, it's just a moment, it's a in-between meal, I'll have a snack, but I'll, again, I try to choose a much, much better option for me. And the easiest way to do that was to not even have it, not even have it. Don't buy it. Don't keep it in the house. Don't go to the store and look for it like nothing. So if I decide tomorrow that I'm going to eat a Snickers, I have to literally get up, get in my car, drive somewhere, buy the Snickers, come home and eat it. By the time I do all that, I don't even want it anymore. I don't because I'm lazy. I'm not. I have selective participation. <laughs> I have selective participation. And getting up to go buy a snack, that just, it ain't it. It ain't it. So if I'm like, oh, I really want a snack, I stay away. I stay away from any store that I might buy something that's not conducive to the life that I want. I stay away. I just don't go there. So first week of January. I weighed myself again. I was at 203, which I'm like, woohoo. I don't know where that 205 went, but I'm happy that it's gone. So I was at 203. Last, no, this week. I'm going to grab my planner. Hold on a second. Okay. So because your girl is a planner girl, <laughs> again, you know, if you've been on my channel, I have this Hobonichi Weeks and it's so pretty. Ah! But I use this to track pretty much everything medically only. So this only has like, you know, medical information. Um, but on January 3rd, I weighed myself, I was 203 pounds. Um, and today is the 13th, by the way, now that I'm looking at a calendar. And then on January 10th, I weighed myself again and I was 201 pounds. So I am already two pounds down in the second week of January and I am thrilled about that. Now, my weight will fluctuate as will most women's weight <laughs> just because that is just the nature of the beast. Um, so, you know, if for some reason next week it's not down again, it won't really shock me. My goal for the month is to just lose like two or three pounds a month. Um, I, I don't want to have an unrealistic, you know, expectation of, oh, I'm going to lose 10. Stop it. For some people, that's very realistic. For me, it's not. I don't want to set myself up for failure by saying, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this month. Because that's just not, that's just not how my body typically works. And I'm okay with that. Two or three, slow and steady wins the race. Because again, I'm not trying to be 125, 135, or even 150. I'm not trying to be. I don't want to be that. So two to three pounds a month for me is excellent. So even if I don't lose any other pounds and I stay at this 201 for January, I'm okay with that. So I'm going to show you. So this is kind of what I've been doing. Um, I have this clothes, my rings sticker. Where is this from? Uh, the sticker party. So I just put this on here and then these little people, I'm going to zoom in. These little people are from the right place plan. So anytime I close my rings for the day, I give myself a little sticker, but I just wanted you really to see the number so you could tell that I wasn't not telling the truth. But these, this weekend here, I got really sick again, <laughs> story of a kindergarten teacher's life. So I did not really do any movement or exercise or anything like that. Um, and then we are currently on this day. So I haven't been able to report it yet because it's like, you know, afternoon time on Saturday. So 
I am doing my best. I did purchase a walking pad. I think I purchased it in November. It was either late November or like early December. I got it before Christmas, I believe. I don't know. Anyway, I did purchase a walking pad. And so I have committed to doing like 30 minutes a day um, on that, which has been really nice. I usually get up in the morning before work. I've been doing my 30 minute walk. And then that way, when I go to work, because I'm a kindergarten teacher and I'm up and I'm moving and I'm, you know, doing all these things, it's very easy for me to close, especially the movement ring. And then the exercise ring automatically gets closed with that 30 minute walk in the morning. Um, and then, so then all I have to really focus on is making sure I'm standing up periodically to reach that stand goal for the day. So the weekends obviously are a little bit harder because I am more sedentary on the weekends because that's typically when I'm, you know, doing homework for class or lesson planning or regular planning or filming or editing or working on my Etsy shop. Like I spend more time doing that on the weekends than I do a lot of moving and grooving. So it wouldn't be surprising if most of my weekends I'm not closing rings just because I'm doing more behind the scenes kind of stuff on the weekends. So just to kind of give you a an idea of, I'll show you this one because it's like, well, let me see. I don't really put anything like super bad, super crazy. Okay, yeah, no, we'll do a blank one because I do put... <laughs> Like I said, this is for like health. So I do put some um, medical journeys, but I just want to kind of show you some things that I'm tracking. So like here is where I put any like feeling or, you know, um, any symptom or anything like that. I typically put over here on this side. I do like to put the weather on my page just because I feel like for me, the weather does you know, kind of cause different feelings in me when it's cold and snowy and, you know, rainy and things like that. I do tend to be more like, I guess lethargic would be the word. Like, you know, just because I'm, I just, my body is like, oh, it's time to rest. <laughs> so I do like to make note of that so that in case there is a day where I'm not as active as normal, I'll be like, oh, it rained all day. And I also have, um, just because of injuries, like I have arthritis that has settled in like in my knee and my back. So I do tend to be in a higher pain level on those days. Um, and then this little tracker here, I put in where I track like my pain level. You know, if it was just a very like bad, high pain kind of day, I like to keep track of that. Whether or not I drink my water, I am not a drinker. I have never been a drinker. Like that's the hardest thing for me. So for me, getting 24 ounces not 24, 64 ounces of just liquid in general a day. For some days for me, it's a stretch. And I know some people just drink all day. I'm I'm just not, I'm not that person. I never have been. I literally should probably set a timer to make myself drink something. I'm just, I'm just not a drinker. So I am doing right now my protein shake. I don't know why I'm holding that. I'm doing my protein shake. I'm doing my, so that's about 12 ounces Anywhere between 12 and 14 ounces, I have my cup of coffee, which is like another eight. And then I'm committing myself for sure to two bottles of water. Um, but I think I'm going to be able to bump that up to three because I'm finding that throughout probably about five o'clock, I'm done with water. So I'm going to start bumping it up to three because what happens after five is I'm not drinking anything else. So I need to start you know, getting in the habit of, of drinking more water after five. I also track my movement and that's just basically, did I, you know, do any type of workout, whether it's on my um, walking pad or, you know, a YouTube video, which Grow With Joe is amazing, by the way, for anybody that has like, you know, physical issues, her videos are very low impact and easy to follow. So I appreciate watching her channel the most. Um, I do track whether or not I sleep at least six hours, because again, that makes a huge difference in my life. Whether or not I have headaches, because I do suffer from headaches frequently. I actually have a low headache pretty much every single day. Um, and that again, came with COVID and it's just never stopped. So I have a pretty much low, the first COVID, <laughs> I have a low headache pretty much every single day. Um, but it elevates, like I said, if I do not have that cup of coffee, or there's just certain times where 
you know, I get the full blow migraine. So, so far we have not been able to figure out what it is or what's triggering it, but I do have medication for it that I hate because it makes me feel like extra, extra crazy. So during that time, I typically just try to sleep it off. I track bowel movements because I, I don't poop. I don't, I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I don't poop regularly. <laughs> I know some people, I'm always jealous of people are like, oh man, I poop like three times a day. I'm like, I'm so jealous. Like I'm lucky for once. So once a day is like, woo. So I do track that because obviously that makes a big difference, especially when you're trying to lose weight. Like if you just keep it all in, you're not going to lose any weight. So I do track that. And then I also suffer with acid reflux. So that's something that I like to keep track as well. Whether or not it was a good day or a bad day, because again, for me gaining weight makes the reflux worse. So I can always tell when my body has picked on more weight because my reflux is more frequent and the regular uh, like omeprazole that I'm taking does not fix it. So, and then on the bottom here, I like to track meals and I don't do breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I typically don't even eat breakfast. I usually just do the protein shake. Um, and then lunch is always like a healthy choice or... Uh, lean cuisine or you know something like that something that's prepackaged. I check the sodium content I check the calories obviously make sure it's more of a protein packed uh, meal but that's typically what I do for lunch just because it's easier and it's more convenient for school and I don't have to worry about the prep um, and then for dinner that's that's the wild card so that's typically what I try to keep track of just so I can kind of make mental notes of again if you know I ate frozen pizza all week. <laughs> That's probably not a great idea. And it may show next week if I gain a pound, you know, like, so I try to keep track primarily of dinner because that's the wild card meal for me. Um, and then it would also help me notice if I did start going out again too frequently and didn't really pay any attention to it. Because the reality is like, once you're going through life, like, you don't always pay attention to those little things that can shift um, just because, you know, it's out of habit or routine or out of, you know, necessity because of your schedule and your life and, you know, all of those things. I'm very fortunate to be one, uh, you know, my son is an adult, <laughs> so I don't have to worry about like soccer practice and basketball games and school events. And I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff, which definitely throws off a schedule and a routine. I don't have to worry about being a homeschool mom or, you know, any of those things that could kind of shift your focus from your physical well-being. I don't have to worry about those things. I am single now, which I don't think I've ever actually announced that on my channel, <laughs> but I am single now. So I really only have to focus on myself as far as eating is concerned um so you know i don't there's so there my situation what i'm trying to say is my situation is different than a lot of people's situation and i completely understand that because even before when i was married like things were just different what i had to do what i cooked what we ate what we did it was just different so um you know i'm just i'm just in a different position now and i'm trying to not only be better for myself physically, for myself mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Like I'm trying to just be a much better, well-rounded individual. Um, so that's, you know, like I said, that's including my physical self, my mental self, my spiritual self, my financial self. Like, again, if you have been following me, like even financially, I have like changed my life <laughs> so it's not even like 2024 new me all that jazz it's really like girl get stop it because you're doing too much get your life together like and this has just been slowly progressing since starting in 2023 everything has just been a slow progression up until this point get your life together because you're doing too much that's that's it. That's that's where we are. So I am going to end this here. I will promise you, hold me to it, that I'm going to do more updates. June will be my four-year um, post-op 
So I will go ahead and, and at least come back in June to let you know where I'm at. And hopefully I have some good news. <sighs> hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully I don't fall off the wagon again, but if I do, we get back on the wagon and we start over and that's it. If we fall, we get up, we dust ourselves off, we adjust our crowns and we start over and that's it. That's it. No more giving up on me. No more. I'm not giving up on me anymore going forward. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love it for you to give me a thumbs up and also leave me any comment below, even if it's just an emoji, leave me any comment below because it really does help my channel. Um, and it does help YouTube know that my content is being appreciated and it pushes out further. And I appreciate that very much. If you have any questions about weight loss surgery or anything like that, please reach out to me. You can reach out to me email. You can reach out to me on my other social media platforms. You can leave me a comment below and I'll answer it. But you know, sometimes you want like a more private discussion and that's okay. So reach out to me. I have no problem, none, <laughs> sharing my journey, sharing my story, sharing like all of the things that I've been through. I have absolutely no problem. If you are interested in learning more about like my mental issues <laughs> that have come for surgery. Also, let me know that and I can do a video on that as well. Um, if you have any questions about like my, you know, plan as far as like what I'm doing here, let me know about that as well. And I don't mind, you know, sharing it more in a private way versus like a public way, just because people are mean. You guys, people, <laughs> Whew, people are mean and I just don't, I don't feel like being trolled. I don't feel like being trolled about what I'm eating or what I'm not eating or, you know, I just don't. So if you're more interested in like the actual, what I'm actually eating or anything like that, send me a, a private message and I'll be happy to go into you, go into more details about that with you. It's not great. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's not, it's just regular. <laughs> just regular. But, you know, some people are curious and that's okay. Um, but I think that's it. So you guys be safe, be kind, or be quiet. Heavy on the be quiet. If you're not going to say anything kind, be safe. And I'll catch you in the next one.